All right, we're digging React, and we're back. We're reacting to the ALDS Game 2 in the Bronx. Last night, we were boots on the ground. We brought the old ring out for the boys out there, and we don't lose when the ring is on. Not going to lie here for a second. Was extremely worried in the beginning of the game. Carlos Rodon came out, punched three tickets in the first inning. We walked into that game, washed up Chuck, Nick Dosher, and I, the two New York boys, the Yankee fans, and we said if Carlos Rodon is landing that slider early, it's not going to be good for the boys. But shout out to all the young pitchers out there. Listen, it's good to show emotion. It's good to be locked in. But you got to stay locked in for the course of the outing. Tyreek Scooble yesterday went seven after the last out in the seventh inning, gave it everything he had, unleashed the energy, unleashed the beast, was fired up for the boys. Everything was directed to his team, to the boys in Detroit, and he fired the club up. Now, young pitchers, if you're going to show emotion, you better be careful, especially if you're going to do it for the first inning. You do not want to motivate any more of these big league players because – Oh, boy, El Capitan had something to say about it. He came out there, and the ball actually just landed. We're in studio here. The boys are, hey, there's a lot of tension in Jersey City right now. Nino just hit the ball, and it just landed right next to me. Nothing cheap about that, Homer, baby. That short portion right. We don't need that. Nino went left center way, way, way back. Appreciate the fans out there in New York throwing that back, too. That's going to look real good on the mantle right there. Add it up. Put it right next to the Chevy. Put it right next to the MVP. Let's recap the game here. This is what I love about what happened here. Game one, we talked about Vance Wilson, the third base coach, maybe making an aggressive mistake, but that's how we play the game. It's all good. Vance, three guys sent home last night. That a baby. Way to stay aggressive. Way to keep the line moving. Way to keep the guys going. Michael Garcia setting the tone at the top of the lineup. Shout out to Qtaro. Q making all the right moves yesterday. Switching the lineup up, putting Michael in the leadoff spot. Michael Massey throwing him at the leadoff spot against righties the whole time with the playoffs. These guys are setting the tone. These guys are coming to play right now. Speaking of, we talked about game one. Waka, stressful innings. Went out there, fifth inning, leadoff walk. We brought in Zerpa. Listen, we talked about maybe giving the guy the clean inning. Cole Reagans gave us some great innings last night. Stressful innings. Pulled him after the fourth. Pulled him after the fifth. Got the guy in there. Zerpa bounced back. Zerpa is our go-to against Soto. This guy was throwing 98 mile an hour bowling ball sinkers, and it was nasty. It seems like they're settling in. Ursek came in, do what he did. That's our trump card. We know about that. Now, let's talk about this, the Bronx experience, the New York Yankees, the Yankee Stadium experience. First of all, nothing but straight class from the Bronx right there. I'm talking about sitting in the Legend Suites, going down under. Felt like I was in a five-star restaurant then. As soon as you walk out of that door and you get to the field, it is a jungle out there. And those boys, those fans, those people in New York, those boys and girls, they can create an atmosphere out there because that was second to none. The pregame introductions, the LED lights go down, the crowd goes crazy. That was some fun. Aaron Judge is special because when he comes to hit, that place turns full focus on Aaron Judge and they all rise and show that man respect. Speaking of showing that man respect, I still don't want Aaron Judge swinging the bat. Him and Bobby Witt Jr. right now, a little quiet. That means we're going to see some action in Kansas City. Bobby Witt Jr., don't you worry about him, Kansas City. He's right where he needs to be. That's the sign of a good team as well. If Bobby Witt's not going to get four or five hits every single game, the boys are going to step up and have his back. But watch out for Bobby Witt Jr. Sitting next to Wash Up Chuck, talking baseball all game. I said, Chuck, let me tell you what's going to happen here for this last at bat. Bobby Witt Jr. is going to hit a pop-up here and just miss it. He's going to hand his first base coach the helmet and say, D. Hollins, I found it. That was a swing right there. We're going deep. First at bat in Kansas City at the K. The crowd's going to be going nuts. The series goes back to Kansas City. Now, this is going to be a different ball game here. There's not a short porch in right field for these guys to get homer. The Yankees are going to not have to be one-dimensional. They're going to have to play some baseball. The boys in blue can play some baseball. We can steal bases. We can bunt. We can get the guy over. We can mix and match. We can plug the guys in in the right spot. The Yankees are going to have to play a different brand of baseball right now. They're going to have to have some guys step up that haven't been stepping up so far. So let's watch out for that. Detroit, Cleveland. Emmanuel Class A has been one of the top closers in our game for a long time now. Virtually unhittable. And Carpenter out there in Detroit took that slider way back for a three-run job. Tyreek Scooble continued to do what he does. He had a Cy Young type year. Continues to pitch that form in the postseason. Watch out for that series. It's not on in prime time, but we still need to watch that. And I think Cleveland's still going to have no problem. But Detroit continues to be America's team right now. That's the underdog. That seems to be 
what everyone's pulling for right now. So we got some great baseball ahead, and I am fired up for this postseason. How can you not be? We'll see you Wednesday, KC. Mm-hmm.